What do you do when life throws you pineapples? Well, you make pineapple juice. But how? We would use a function. This function. You might look at me as if I'm crazy and say, Sir, this is not a function. It's actually a juice extractor. And I can agree. But in mathematics, a function converts something into something else. And this juice extractor operates as a function. It changes pineapples into pineapple juice. So put the raw pineapple inside the juicer. It does a lot of pressing and grinding and then it pushes out the pineapple juice. So in mathematics, we can define a function as a process that takes raw materials, which we call inputs, and converts them into finished products, which is called outputs. So the important or the key words in this sentence, it's a process that takes raw materials or inputs, and in this case, the input would have been the pineapple, and it converts them into finished products, which we call outputs, which would have been the pineapple juice. In nature, we also have functions. So here we have a plant. It would take in sunlight and through the process or the function of photosynthesis, it converts that sunlight into energy and oxygen. Here's another one. This involves us. We take in food and our bodies process that food and convert it into energy. And here's a process that many persons might like. We're starting off with the raw material, the input, which is the sugar cane. After they cut the sugar cane, they put it through some processes. And this is the big machine that Appleton Estate used to convert the raw sugar cane and turn it into alcohol and putting it into the, the barrels. And that is how we get the famous Appleton Estate um, run. So we take the sugar cane, the raw materials, the inputs, we process it in a machine, and what comes out was the rum. So we're going to look at function notation, and pretty much it's how we write or name a function. So let's look at the first example. So I have a function, and its name is f. So the function is f. It takes the input x. That means we're going to put x into the function f. This is what the function f does. It takes x, double it or multiply it by 2, and the result, you add 6 to it. So the name of this function, for example, is f. So we say f of x, which is the function f that takes the input x. Let's look at this one. The name of the function is g. What does it take as its input? x. So the function g says we're going to have 7. We're going to subtract from 7 3 times whatever x is. So that is the process that x is going to go through to give us some output g of x. Let's look at the last one. So we have h of x, which means the function h that takes the input x. This means you're going to put whatever x is inside the function h. So h says we're going to take whatever x is, square it, which means to multiply by itself, and then add 5 to the result. And pretty much that's it. There's another way that we can represent function, and I'm going to show you, or write them. So, it could be f, using some colons now, 
eggs and then the arrow and then we have the function so it's saying the same thing we have a function named f that takes the input x and this is what f does with x it takes that x multiply it by 2 and then add 6 this one now g colon x and a little arrow that tells us what g is going to do with x going to have 7 and then subtract 3 times x from it same thing with h h the colon x the arrow and then the process that x will go through in the function h so these are just ways that we can represent or write function and that's why we call them function notation so we want to evaluate a function and when we're evaluating a function it means to put a value to or to find out the end result the output so it says given that the function f that takes the input x the process is 3x minus 1 so we are trying to evaluate or find the value of f of 2 so what i like to start off with is the original function for f of x so f of x is 3x minus 1 so that's 3x minus 1 and the input is going to be 2. So wherever I see x, I'm going to replace it with 2. And we're going to use brackets to do that. See? And I'm going to bring down everything that's around it. So this 3 will come right in front of the x. And this minus 1 will come right down here. So to keep it clean, I'll just put f of 2 on the left and then just work it through so three times two that will give us six and then we're going to subtract one from that six minus one is five so if we have this function f and we put two inside of it the output will give us five understand let's try another one we're going to now evaluate f of, let's say, 5. So I'm going to start with the original function, which is this. That's the process we're going to put x through. So I'm going to rewrite that and have 3x minus 1. So I'm going to put five inside the function now so wherever i see x i'm going to put five and i'm putting it in brackets to show that i'm substituting it i'm taking out x and i'm putting in some value for it and the value i'm putting in is five so x is now five and then we'll have three and then we'll have the minus one so three by five that will give us 15 and we're subtracting one from that. When we have 15 take away one, we're going to get 14. So f of five is going to be equal to 14. So this means if I have the function f, which is three x minus one, and I put in five, I'm going to get out 14.